First comes love, then comes marriage, right? In 2013, it's more like first comes the need for health insurance or a green card, and then comes marriage. Joining us to discuss the institution of marriage and what kind of revamp it might need, we have Harry Carlson, a health advocate and founder of WillGetMarriedForHealthInsurance.com. Well, I, I have people on my website that actually write me, and I actually try to connect people that are, honestly are trying to share their health insurance, their great health insurance, out of compassion for someone else. And if that is through marriage, we have lonely people that just want companionship. And in return, I had some 38,000 marriage proposals on my website. I had probably 12,000 military men that asked for my hand in marriage and they wanted to get married to me. Why? Because they make $10,000 more as a married person in the military than a single person. So, you know, we have military men that are getting married for the benefit of having extra money per year. And they're giving me Absolutely. great health insurance. Just, it's a win-win situation. I'm yeah. getting great health insurance and they're getting 10 grand more a year. Is there ever a good reason to get married other than for love? Yeah, life and death. Um, there are people <laughs> who are literally losing their life. They have no health insurance. They're gonna lose their home. They're gonna lose their life savings. And if you are faced with that and you have a pre-existing condition, I have people say, I'm gonna mortgage my house because my wife has cancer and I can't afford the chemo. So in situations like that, um, when you're talking life and death, yeah, you would marry in order to save your life and to get the treatment that you need. You can have a marriage and it not mean anything other than a way to get whether it's a green card, whether it's to save your life, whatever you need.